images cleverly projected on the snow from above. Nicely done, Olu. What? That is very cool. Wow. Like, that's legitimately, like, one of the coolest things I've seen all day long. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's time. That's right. It's time for another Not Just Bikes reaction. And uh, I've done a lot of Not Just Bikes reactions before, but I've not done this one. We're going to do this one right here. It's called Why Canadians Can't Bike in the Winter But Finnish People Can. That is correct. And uh, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure Finland and Canada have, like, a very strikingly similar... Like, Canada's cold. We all know that. And we all know fin Finland's cold, right? So, uh, yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to find out, guys. As always, the links to the original video will be in the description section down below. So make sure you go check that out. And uh, hit like, hit subscribe while you're down there. Drop a random comment. It helps the algorithm. I love this channel, by the way. Here in the Netherlands, our family routinely takes advantage of the network of safe cycling paths found almost everywhere. These are so safe that even our young children can cycle themselves to school, activities, and friends' houses, and they have become an important part of the high quality of life we experience here. Unfortunately, all of this is completely impossible back in Canada because there, we have winter. And of course, you can't cycle in the winter, or so I'm told, Okay, yeah, I was going to say, or so I'm told, the sarcastic part. Yeah, they got winter in Canada. We have winter here, too. But they also have winter in Finland, guys. That's right. Finnish people experience winter. I know, that's just crazy, right? Repeatedly, by people who have never tried it. This is the city of Olu in Finland. It Olu. is considered the winter cycling capital of the world. This is a city where 22% of all trips are taken by bicycle, and where 77% of the population says they cycle at least occasionally. And yet, despite their harsh winters, over half of these people cycle all year round. And it's not just the young and the strong who cycle in the winter here. You'll see even very elderly people cycling in minus 20 degree weather. Now, do you have to have special tires for this? Um, because I know like a lot of the times you get a bike around here and it's meant like they design it for like just regular pavement. Um, but of course a lot of the bike and not all of it, but a lot of the times like biking around here is just, you know, for recreation and stuff. And, uh, so if you just go get a standard bike, it's not going to be built for utilitarian reasons. It's just going to be built for fun. You know, so it's a lot, a lot of us have, has like really slick tires, you know, there's not a bunch of knobbies on there or any grippy parts, you know, anything like that. Uh, unless, I mean, you can get specific like off-road kind of tires, mountain bikes and stuff like that, of course, but just your standard commuter bicycle would have, uh, uh, like just street tires or, you know, whatever kind of tires that are made for pavement. So I wonder if, if they... I'm sure they do. They probably have like a, a lot of grippiness on there. Maybe like l the little tiny like pokey things that stick out and grip into the ice and the snow. This is what the bicycle parking lot of a typical elementary school in Olu looks like in January. Okay, so yeah, that's a lot of like what we would call mountain bikes here or like off-road trail bikes, stuff like that. That's definitely not, those aren't Dutch bikes. Those aren't commuter bike i mean i guess it is commuter bikes for them like this one here that one almost looks like a standard like 20 inch bike frame uh like a bmx kind of frame but with mountain bike off-road forks and handlebars very interesting you don't see that bike that style of bike a lot around here because 52 percent of all trips to school and university are taken by bicycle okay Somehow, even little Finnish kids can cycle all year round. So this does lead to the obvious question. Why are Canadians such giant wimps? But maybe it's not quite that simple. Yeah, guys. Why are the Canadians wimps? <laughs> this is the city of Tampere, also in Finland. Okay. Despite the fact that Finnish people call this a swimming pool, far fewer people cycle in Tampere compared to Olu. Well, so first of all, you don't have, 
Now, the other video, the the clip that he was just showing in Allahu or Alamu or whatever it was called, I apologize for that, but uh, it looked like it was plowed more. This is just sloshy, thick snow. Like, that's eight inches thick in, in parts. Or the, the centimeter equivalent, which I don't know what that is. Apologies. We need to use the metric system in America, guys. I tell you what, it would make things a lot easier for international communication, wouldn't it? So why is this? Fortunately, we don't have to guess, because researchers have studied and written papers about winter cycling, and the results are very clear. Okay. In cities with cold winters, there is almost no correlation between winter temperatures and the amount of winter cycling. Let that sink in. The temperature and weather conditions do not significantly affect the level of winter cycling in a city. So they're not big babies over there. They're just like, it's just part of their life. It is a complete myth that people do not cycle in the winter because of the cold. Now that looked like, that looks like a Dutch bike path. But it says Au Aulu. So maybe they, I guess they have bike paths that look the same with that red color to it. And uh, damn near the same logo. Is this really Aulu? Or is this footage from the Netherlands, guys? So what does the research tell us? Well, there need to be two things in place to get people to cycle like they do in Olu. Olu. I knew, I knew I was pronouncing it right. If you guys live in Olu, I'm sorry. First, is there a network of safe bicycle paths? Is it possible to get to where you want to go without having to share the road or regularly cross paths with high-speed motor traffic? This is something that Olu does exceptionally well. Olu has 875 kilometers of separated bicycle paths that connect every part of the city. Okay. That's over four meters of bicycle path for every resident. In fact, Olu has only about 600 meters of painted bicycle lanes in the entire city which makes perfect sense because when it snows, you can't see white paint, but you can Very true. Can see images cleverly projected on the snow from above. Nicely done, Olu. What? That is very cool. Wow. Like that's legitimately like one of the coolest things I've seen all day long. And I just watched Linus Tech Tips build a full-size desktop computer in a laptop briefcase chassis. And that was cool too, but it doesn't beat this. And this is not some kind of super compact medieval European city either. Olu has plenty of car-centric sprawl and many people live in single-family homes. In fact, it has almost exactly the same urban population density as my hometown of London, Ontario in Canada. Okay. Like, this is creepy how close these numbers are. Yeah. And why is it that every city has the ugliest flags except for Amsterdam? <laughs> except for it, it, it is a pretty cool flag. Anyway, there is literally zero reason why a typical mid-sized Canadian city couldn't be like Olu if it was designed properly. Exactly. It's got about the same climate, guys. Like, look at that. I, I For a second, I didn't know if they were talking about Canada or Olu. I had to look down and see, like, where, you know, because he's, he's, he's showing footage back and forth. There's It looks like Canada, like, with the snow. And it, it actually looks like it gets here in January. Olu just takes the effort to connect every resident to the places they want to go with safe paths for walking and cycling. And even better, many of these bicycle paths are designed to be shortcuts that are faster than driving, encouraging people to cycle even more, just as is done in the Netherlands. And if that wasn't enough, Olu also has over 300 underpasses that pedestrians and cyclists can use to avoid major roads. But do they have heated uh, bike paths or like heated um, sidewalks like the Netherlands? There's Amsterdam and I think probably some other towns and, and cities as well, but... Um, they have heated bike paths so that like it just the snow just melts away. I wonder if they have anything like that here. These make it possible to cycle entire journeys without ever encountering a traffic light or even needing to stop. Cool. This should not be a surprise to anyone. A network of safe bicycle lanes is the single biggest predictor for the level of cycling in any city in the world. It's significantly more important than any other metric, including culture, distance, hills, and in this case, weather. After a safe bicycle network, the next most important element is snow removal. Is the bicycle network properly maintained in the winter? And this is the real key to Olo's success, as there are very, very, very few cities that do this well. 
Toronto, yeah. as an example, is a city with fairly mild winters, compared to Finland and most of Canada for that matter. Okay, so this is milder than Finland, and specifically Toronto, Canada, he said. Well, but he, but he said mostly, unlike most of Canada, so... Canada has a lot of Arctic. If it, I don't know if you're including that or not, but uh, Canada has a lot of Arctic that don't even anybody live there. Like, it practically connects to the North Pole, I think. Yet very, very few people cycle there in the winter. When you look at videos of winter cycling in Toronto, is there any surprise? Most of Toronto's bicycle paths are painted bicycle gutters. These become dumping grounds for snow. They're routinely driven over by drivers, leaving tread marks that melt and refreeze into impassable paths of jagged ice. Or yeah, that, that stuff sucks. Forcing cyclists to share the road with cars. You know, that's what they do here, too. Like, they plow the roads, which is great. You know, you got to plow the roads. But they plow it right into the, the little bike paths that, and sidewalks that we actually do have. You, you can't, people don't walk down the... the, the it's hard to walk down sidewalks in the wintertime, guys, because, you know, yeah, you got the random person that, that, that decided to shovel the, the, um, the sidewalk in front of their house. Because usually you'll have, like, the road, then you'll have, like, three-foot strip of land, and then you'll have the sidewalk, and then you'll have, like, the person's front yard, and then, of course, their house. Some people do take the, the, um, the ambition, you know, to get out there and, 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 you know, clear out the sidewalk in front of their house, but uh, a lot of people don't, and then it ends up just being like a pile of wet, nasty snow that's full of like blackness from like car exhaust and oil and and all that. So most of the people that do walk, um, and you don't hardly ever see anybody ride a bike in the winter here either. But if you do, they're not doing it on the sidewalk. Normally, they'll be like right here hugging this white line on the side of the road, hoping that the cars don't hit them as they go by because it's almost impossible. Like, you don't see this very often where this is plowed. That's not even in front of a house. This is like a weird, like, what is this, like a weird makeshift fence thing? I, I don't even know. Um, but around here, nobody would just get out there, and the city sure as hell don't do it. And if nobody lives there that's going to take the ambition to do it themselves, it don't get done. It looks like piled up like that. Even the proper separated bicycle paths often get snow dumped in them by snow plows. Yeah. And only a fraction of the already minuscule bicycle network is maintained in the winter. The city says they don't even start plowing unless there's more than five centimeters of snow. This is the reason why few people cycle through the winter in Toronto, or any other Canadian city. Not the weather. And, and just uh, United States as well, I would think. In Olu, the priority bicycle routes are all plowed within three hours of a two centimeter snowfall, and they will be plowed multiple times per day if necessary. Okay. Snow removal contractors guarantee that the depth of the snow will never exceed four centimeters. Well, guarantee it'll never reach four centimeters. Whereas in Canada, they don't even start plowing until it's after five. <laughs> very, very different and they maintain the pass with hard packed snow that is free of ice and debris, making it easy to cycle on. Now, how do they make that free of ice? If it rains or if it melts a little bit and then refreezes back, wouldn't it just naturally turn into ice? That's what it does here, I, I don't know. To put it simply, the bicycle pass in Olu are considered important pieces of infrastructure that get people from point A to point B. So they don't want cyclists to start competing for space on public transit or worse, to drive cars. Why is America so backwards? Because it snowed. They make it a priority. Olu proves that cold is not the issue. Snow is not the issue. Winter is a lazy excuse used by ignorant people to make the discussion of safe road infrastructure go away. <laughs> I mean, he's got a point. The snow might explain why only 22% of trips in your city are taken by bicycle instead of, say... 42%. But when less than 2% of your population rides a bike, it's not because of the weather. It's because people don't feel safe cycling. Period. The truth no. is, cycling in cold weather is really not bad at all. Toronto routinely gets cold days but without much snow, where the roads are perfectly clear. So after getting sick of waiting on transit vehicles that were constantly stuck in traffic because Canadian public transit is stupid and counterproductive, 
I decided to try cycling to work in the winter, and it was fine. There's nothing hardcore or extreme about cycling in winter. I did it, and I assure you, I am not a particularly tough person. Now, one thing I will say is you you, you need to have, like, one of those... Um like covers over your wheels, like a fender or whatever it's called. Cause otherwise you will get a lot of stuff splashed up your back. I I've rode bikes in the wet. I've rode bikes in the snow and, and it was just a regular 20 inch BMX style bicycle. Certainly not meant for that. Um, and, and you end up with stuff splattered all over your back. So I would definitely say, get a, get a wheel cover for sure. If that's what you're going to do. Um, in the front wheel too, because it'll it'll spray up that way as well. Just ask my brother. You mean my brother? He's a total wimp. At first, I had some problems with ice, but then I discovered studded winter tires. These things are like magic on ice. I never slipped once when using them. That's what I'm talking about right there, the little spiky things. Studded winter tires, guys. The spiky things that goes into the, the that grabs the snow. Yes. It's interesting to note, though, that most people do not use studded tires in Olu, because when you plow your bicycle paths properly, they're not slippery at all. Uh -huh. And the same goes for sidewalks. Seriously, okay. winter maintenance of the sidewalks and bicycle paths in Olu is incredible. This is complicated and expensive, but it's still a fraction of the cost of maintaining wide roads and highways for cars. Olu shows what it's possible if your city isn't bankrupt from maintaining too much car infrastructure. Olu tracks data on cyclists very well with automated bicycle detectors like these. What's what? interesting is that the number of people cycling in winter stays pretty consistent until the temperature goes below about minus 20 degrees. How do they keep track of it? So that's the amount of people, does it count, like, I don't know. I wonder how they get those numbers, guys. And even then, it only drops by 15%. This may surprise you, but one thing I consistently hear from people who try winter cycling is that they're a lot warmer than they thought they'd be. Well, yeah, you're working up that body heat, just like when I'm out here chopping wood or, or you know, cutting wood, which actually I need to do that soon before it gets dark. But, you know, if I'm running the chainsaw or I'm splitting wood, uh, I'm moving around. I got a coat on. I'm moving around. Honestly, sometimes I'm sweaty and I'm hot. And then I make the mistake of taking my coat off, and then I'm out there in a the t-shirt, and then as soon as I come in, then I realize, and then I'm froze to the core, and then I'm wrapped up on the couch under blankets for the next couple hours drinking hot cocoa or coffee. But still, yeah, yeah. I thought cycling in the winter would be frigidly cold, but you warm up surprisingly quickly. And cycling in the snow is actually quite pleasant. Drivers typically drive much slower, the noise pollution of the city is muffled, okay. and it's easy to maintain a comfortable temperature in all but the coldest weather conditions. I definitely prefer it, by far, to cycling in the rain. Some people... Well, yeah, cycling in the rain sucks. People like to talk about the gear you need for winter cycling, so I'll share what I would typically wear when cycling in the winter. First, I recommend a jacket. This is like a big warm what? shirt that you wear over your clothes. Next, you'll need gloves. These are kind of like... You gotta keep those hands warm, guys. Like shoes, but for your hands, which is why both the Dutch and the Germans call them hand shoes. Really? Hans Schoenen? Huh. Interesting, I did not know that. I'd also recommend one of these woolen head coverings. People call these by many different names, but they're all wrong. It's called a toque. Now that you've got your specialized gear, you're ready to go cycling in the winter. Is he being sarcastic or is it really called a toque? Like, obviously it's a hat, but is that specific style of hat called a toque? Or is the guy just being sarcastic? Because he can be a little bit. Now when the temperatures get really cold, like below minus 20 degrees, you'll want to wear more layers and a scarf. But it's exactly the same kind of clothing that Canadians routinely wear when skiing, snowmobiling, or doing any other kind of winter activity. Yep, except for that. You can even get pogies for your bike to keep your hands warm, just like they do for snowmobiles. These are great. Thankfully, several okay. frigid Canadian cities have stopped giving cyclists the cold shoulder and are warming up to the idea of winter cycling, though progress is still glacial. Insert joke about snow. I was going to say, good job, Canada. Obviously. 
I know it's called Canada. Don't roast me in the comments. Canada just sounds so much cooler and funner to say, though, right, guys? Edmonton, Alberta recently built a network of protected bicycle lanes downtown and now plows the protected bicycle network with the same priority as major roads. Oh. When I was in Yellowknife, which is here, I was impressed by the quality of the new bicycle infrastructure they were installing. And Montreal saw an 83% increase in winter cycling in 2020 over the previous year's average, likely due in part to the addition of more separated bicycle lanes. They've also started to use not just snow plows, but ice crushing machines like this one to clear the bicycle paths. Oh, cool. And I really enjoy the dramatic music in the manufacturer's marketing video. But while this is good nice. progress, all of this pales in comparison to Olu. Edmonton only plows a small eight kilometer bike network downtown and only within 24 hours. Most of Yellowknife's bike network is still painted bicycle gutters. And Montreal. <laughs> wow, I just snorted. I made a weird noise. But uh, painted bicycle gutters. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. All puts away their bike share bikes for the winter. Unfortunately, winter is still used as the number one excuse for inaction in Canadian cities. And American. Well, I guess Canada's part of America, but you know, United States of America. You know what I mean. Even in cities that get very little snow in the winter. Meanwhile, Olu gets more snow than almost any major city in Canada. Canadians okay. also love to exaggerate about the cold, but most Canadian cities only get a handful of really, truly cold days per year. Yeah, uh, we actually... There... I live in northern Indiana, and it gets pretty damn cold here. But we have, like, uh, lake effect. Like, the air comes down from Canada and then goes across Lake Michigan. And there's another lake, like, up above that. Lake Superior, maybe? I don't know. The one I'm close to is Lake Michigan. And the air just whips across the lake and gets ice cold. And I'm only probably an hour drive from Lake Michigan. And uh, I'm close enough that, you know, it's 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 colder in this region than a lot of regions, I feel like, um, you know, and, and a lot of it's because of that air getting whipped across the lake and it just cools down. And then when it snows, they call it lake effect snow because it gathers up more, uh, like condensation and moisture from the lake and everything. And then it just dumps on us and it, it kind of sucks. Just like Finland. Hold on. Really I gotta... love to exaggerate about the cold, but most Canadian cities only get a handful of really, truly cold days per year. Just like Finland. Yeah. But when your only exposure to winter is the walk across the parking lot to your car, you never get used to the weather, and you get an exaggerated sense of how cold it gets. Yeah, because you leave the warmth of your home, you go outside unprepared, undressed, because you're like, oh, I'm just getting in the car. Well, on the way to the car, you're cold. So then you just, you know, yeah, so the more you're in it, the more you're used to it, and the more you realize it's not that bad. Ultimately, like everything else with cycling, it just comes down to safety and convenience, and cold weather doesn't significantly change that. A great place to learn more is the Winter Cycling Congress that happens every February. This event brings together advocates and professionals with a goal of making year-round cycling a normal and practical activity, okay. a viable transportation option for people of all ages and abilities, regardless of winter weather conditions. This year, the Congress is being held online on February 11th, so it's easier than ever to attend. More information on that is in the comments and at wintercycling.org. Go check out those comments, guys, if that's what you're into. But whether you attend the Winter Cycling Congress or not, we need more people to learn the truth about winter cycling. It's not the cold. It's not the snow. It's a proven fact that people of all ages will ride a bicycle in the winter, but only if the city is designed for it. Right. And more places should be designed this way so that cities can be as healthy, productive, convenient, and sustainable as Olu. I just don't see how it's not slick. I just, I guess that's just something my head just can't wrap around because I've rode the bikes, you know, I've rode a bike in the wintertime and stuff. And, and it might've just been because it, like you said, if it's plowed right, maybe they didn't plow it right. Maybe they packed it down and turned it into more ice instead of getting it up, you know, and, and we didn't, we certainly don't have ice crushers. Or at least I've never seen or heard of an ice crusher around here at all. And they, and if it's a thing, it's not a thing they use on bike paths. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to call out wimpy snowflake Canadians who can't handle a little bit of... Okay, so that's the end. 
that's the end of that video. Um, I don't want to play the music or whatever it is there at the end because I'll, I'll definitely get a copyright claim, and I, I get those quite often. I enjoy doing the videos, though, so it's not a huge deal, but uh, there's, there is quite a bit of videos that's not monetized. So anyways, I don't want to take the chance on that. But if you guys want to support the channel, speaking of that, there is links down below uh, uh, for that and everything. And let me know your thoughts on this, okay? And other than that, you guys have a super fun, awesome day, and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, take care. Bye.